For those of you watching this video, you're probably interested in draining your system for maintenance purposes. For those of you who do not know me, I've been building custom PCs for five years now, and majority of them being water-cooled. So over our time, we've actually been taking apart loops pretty much every single week. One PC build per week, and then it's taken apart. So we have deconstructed a number of PCs, and we certainly know how to take a loop apart. So today we're working with a single CPU loop. The same steps will apply even if your GPU was water-cooled, so do stick around if you have a CPU GPU loop. Now I do find a number of ways on the internet which suggest how to actually drain your loop. A lot of them are not real water cooling savvy. They've probably done a couple of water cool builds, but Having tested different methods throughout the period of five years, doing one water-cooled PC per week, we have come up with a solution which works really well and makes it very simple to incur minimal spillage, especially if you have a drain valve. Now, having a drain valve on the reservoir actually makes it so much easier to actually drain the system. So for new water cooling beginners, I would certainly recommend having a drain valve at the lowest point of your reservoir because the reservoir contains the largest body of liquid in your system. It'll make it a lot easier in the end. Now, for those of you who don't have a drain valve, well, I'm certainly sure that you guys have seen a couple of wacky ways that we've come up with to actually drain the system without one of those drain valves. And you can see that in our deconstruction videos, which you will see on our channel. Anyway, guys, let's power this thing down and let's go ahead and drain this system. So we're in a position ready to drain this build. And our first step normally would be to actually layer the bottom section and the CPU block with paper towel where you know spillage could occur while draining this system. This is also especially important for filling the build. In a lot of our videos, we don't normally use our paper towel because we like to show people exactly what they're doing so they can learn. But normally, and what you guys would wanna do is definitely lay paper towel down so you're not spilling any liquid on any of the components. This liquid is safe, even if it does spill on any components. However, it's better to be safe and especially in a white build, you don't want all of your white stuff to get stained or anything like that. So we're gonna lay down paper towel as if this was a GPU loop as well, just to show you guys how you should approach this. So when it comes to draining the loop, one thing that I would invest in while you're buying your water cooling gear is a tiny bit of soft tubing and a little soft tube fitting right here, compression ring. This will screw onto this nicely. The good thing about the soft tubing is it's flexible. So you're able to flex it down so that the liquid can run into something like a bowl or something that can catch the liquid like a container. Now the same can be done with hard tubing coming out of this using a compression fitting, then a bit of hard tube coming out. However, it's good to have the soft tube because as I said, it is flexible and you can get it facing down so that the liquid can go down by gravity. Hard tube isn't really flexible, so you can't bend it in certain ways. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend purchasing a bit of soft tube with your purchase if you do plan on maintaining your build quite regularly. And by regularly, I mean try and maintain it at least once a year and do a coolant flush because you'd never know what is happening, especially if you've got pastel colors, you could have stuff you know, clogging up the radiator, your CPU block could be getting stuff clogged into it. So it's good to maintain and keep it fresh. And not to mention that over time, your liquid's actually gonna gain different ions and particles and stuff from the metals inside, and it's actually going to become conductive again over time. So certainly a good idea to flush out. I recommend at least once a year. Manufacturers seem to grade their liquids at about three years per change, so I'll leave it up to you guys, but once a year is my recommendation. 
So our plan is to take this fitting off right here. This is a stop fitting. Leave the valve closed so no liquid can come out. We're going to screw this on. We're going to get our bottle ready to catch the liquid through gravity. And then what we're gonna have to do is once this is on, our bottle is in place, we can open up the valve. The liquid will start trickling out slowly and then we will start to release one of the ports up to the top of the reservoir because the liquid needs some air in there to replace it with. Once we open one of these valves, you'll see the liquid starting to gush out very fast. It's only gonna gush out slow to begin with because as I said, it does need that air in there to replace it. So our soft tube is threaded in, our fitting up the top is gone, so it is completely open, allowing air to get into the system. So now what we wanna do is, once we've got our bottle in place right here, our tube is inserted enough so that there isn't going to be any spillage or anything like that, we can now open the valve and it will come gushing out because the air is allowed to go in. So let's go ahead and do that. So the good thing about this water cooling method is you have removed the majority of liquid from your system. Now, majority of you will actually find that you'll still have some water in the tubes here. You might have some liquid in the tube here, but that is no issue as long as the top is gone you can easily rotate this out and down to be able to drain the rest of the liquid. You can actually tilt your PC like so. So if I lift up one edge, that'll make the liquid flow down and into the reservoir. And then we can actually open up our valve again and drain the remaining liquid from that. So this tube's practically empty now. It's just got a bit of residual left in it. And that's fine for us to just take the tube out now without spilling anything. And if we do spill a drip here or there, then we do have our tissue paper there to make sure that we don't get it on anything vital. Now, there is a tiny bit of liquid left in here. That is no issue. As I said, once we undo this, we can actually tilt this tube this way and we can tip out the remaining liquid which is left within that tube. So that's normally how I would recommend going about cleaning out one of your water cooling loops. Now, once you you do take the tubes out then it's going to be pretty easy and pretty straightforward to just take your water block off then you can tip the remaining out once that water blocks off you can clean it out if you need to take it apart if you don't want to take it apart and you just want to leave it in there you can leave everything in there put some distilled water in the loop until it comes clear and then you can drain the remaining of that if you did want to put some sort of cleaner in there, uh, you can do that as well by leaving the loop together. I would recommend cleaning it out first with some distilled water and then doing that, trying to get all of the distilled water out as well. But personally, I like to take my water blocks apart to check on them and make sure they're doing all right. And I also like to fully clean out the pump. I actually take the pump apart as well to check that out because sometimes gunk can get stuck in the pump as well. Now the radiator is still gonna have some liquid in there unless you do tip it upside down and around to get the liquid out. But that is no issue because the ports are up the top. So when you undo the screws, you can simply slide the radiator out like so, keeping it up ways and then go and drain the liquid as you please. So personally, what I plan on doing today, because it is a subscriber build and he is going to be picking it up fairly shortly, I'm going to keep adding some distilled water in there until it gets clear enough so that it is clean. So let's go ahead and add our distilled water.
So there you have it guys, that is how you actually flush this system out with distilled water and if you follow our other steps to getting the rest of the liquid out, you can actually remove the tubes and then tip the tiny bit of liquid that's actually left in there after removing all of the liquid from the reservoir. That's exactly what we will be doing with the remainder clear liquid inside but it is safe to say that there is no blue liquid left inside because of the different flushes and cycles that we actually did on this system. So if you were going for a coolant change and you just want to keep your loop together, some distilled water will work perfectly to get it all out. Uh, if you wanna check your water blocks, then of course you don't have to do the distilled water method. You can take everything apart, then you can physically tip out stuff from the radiator, tip out what, is, what little is left inside the tubes and then remove your water block and clean it as I mentioned before. And I'm sure you guys would have seen some of that in some of our dismantle videos. So this PC is going off to one of our subscribers who got us to do the water cooling for them. So have fun with it. It is a beast of a PC, a 2080 Ti inside. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, consider leaving a like, consider subscribing, checking out more videos on the channel. We have lots of custom PCs, reviews, modding tutorials, and much more. And we'll see you guys in the next one.